Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Erin and today I will be using gouache to replicate this piece of concept art made by Ivan Durrell for uh, Disney's 1959 classic Sleeping Beauty. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. This is the longest video I've ever made <laughs> or that I've ever put on YouTube. Um, so yeah, so I figure I can cover not only my process but talk a little bit about uh, the making of Sleeping Beauty which was uh, a groundbreaking animated movie um, and that was the plan that was the intention Walt Disney was determined to create an incredibly beautiful artful animated movie which he did so uh, let's start off by just talking about the composition first because this this image uh, that I chose I chose because look at this we've got this gorgeous stonework on the outside with this sort of dappled shadow light effect which I'm doing here um, with dark gray and then a lighter gray behind it. Uh, and then as we look through this window, the window of the castle, this really lovely archway, we're looking into uh, quite a narrow um, field of view, right? Like we're seeing this really sort of squash composition, but the room we're looking into is expansive. It's just this huge room with, um, with an open wall on the other side. So the sunlight's coming in, looks like it's maybe sunrise or sunset. Um, and it's just this gorgeous scene. So uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing the stonework. This was the first time I've done this much texture uh, and sort of, I sort of wung it. <laughs> I've never said wung it before. I usually say wing it, but I wung it. Uh, you don't really need to look at the uh, source material to create that dry brush effect. You can just kind of go for it. So that's great practice for me. Um, and yeah, doing all these details was really fun. However, it did take me a long time. This piece took three days. Um, usually it takes me just a few hours to do one of these replicant videos, but this one, yeah, I had to break it up into three days in total, about eight hours, nine hours to do the whole thing. Um, the color palette's really beautiful. We'll talk more about uh, the inspiration behind the colors, but I just wanted to mention, you know, when you have a palette like this, everything is quite desaturated. Um, these really beautiful sort of pastel colors that have been des desaturated. Um, and you do that by adding the complementary colors. So that's why I've slowed it down there to show you. I put a little bit of blue in and instead of drawing all the details, I just painted in um, the, the planes of color to create some of the details in these banners. Uh, but let's talk about the filming of or the, the making of Sleeping Beauty. Now I mentioned it came out in 1959. But they actually started production in 1951-52 uh, and the, the first sort of part of the film was doing the voiceovers. And I found out when I was doing research for this that one of the voices, the voice of Sleeping Beauty, otherwise known as um, Aurora, was Mary Costa. And Mary Costa, I'm not sure if she's still living, but she was a professional opera singer and she was actually asked to sing at the memorial service for JFK. A little, uh, little tidbit there. Um, but the actual production started in 1953 and didn't finish until 59. So it took six years <laughs> to make this, uh, this animated movie. And the whole idea behind it was, as I mentioned, Walt Disney really wanted to create an artful piece. He wanted this to be a ground, groundbreaking film. And he did say at the beginning that he didn't care how long it was going to take. He was, he was going for it. Um, and to the chagrin of a lot of the animators, it took six years to complete. Now, the reason um, that it took that long, well, there's a few reasons, but one is because he really was determined to have the concept artist, the background artist, Ivan Earl, um, to have his voice shine through at the end of production because Walt Disney had this, this issue. He, he was very annoyed with the fact that when he would hire these amazingly talented young concept artists like Ivan Earl and Mary Blair, that by the time the, the films were finished, you wouldn't be able to see a trace of their work in the final piece. So, you know, they'd start off with these really incredibly um, unique and um, unusual concept art, right? These, these really dynamic, compositions and color combinations and then by the end of the film they'd be gone uh, you wouldn't really notice them at all so that bugged Walt so he he wanted this to be a different experience he wanted Ivan's voice to carry through which it did um, and so yeah the, the issue with the six years was 
not only were the animators getting, you know, annoyed because they have, had to keep re sort of creating the foreground animations to keep up with the backgrounds because the backgrounds were so beautiful and detailed and stylized that yeah it was it was a real struggle to try to keep up with the backgrounds and in fact by the end of production um, sadly Ivan Earl kind of bowed out he, he ended up leaving Disney and then other animators they simplified the backgrounds that he had created so they're still very much Ivan Earl you can really sense his his stylistic approach but yeah, they, they kind of dumbed down the backgrounds for the final, for the final piece. Um, oh, you might hear a background noise. That's my neighbor upstairs using their toilet. <laughs> well, maybe not using their toilet, but flushing, using water. Anyway, uh, back to the video. Um, so Ivan Earl, little background about him. He had been trying to get a job at Disney for a long time. He actually first applied in 1934 when he was 18 years old. Um, already quite an established artist. I mean, not established as far as, you know, financial success, but he had been um, actively drawing, painting uh, for quite, quite a long time by the time he was 18. And he didn't get the job at, at Disney in 1934, but he kept applying every week for three years, which is amazing like it sort of puts things in perspective for me if I get rejected for something I'm like okay I'll just keep going Ivan did and look what happened to his career so there you go so he kept trying but um, after serving in the military and then he took art classes and then he actually had a bit of a portrait business he started a Christmas card business with a friend after all that in 1951 he was hired by Disney and then he worked as a background artist for about a year or so before he started working on uh, Sleeping Beauty. So yeah, so Ivan, when he got the job to, to sort of create the look, the backgrounds, the color story, all of that for Sleeping Beauty, um, he started to do some research for the look of the film. And most of the film takes place in either the forest or in a castle and within this kingdom that has sort of a medieval feel. And so it makes sense that Ivan looked to Gothic art and medieval tapestries for his inspiration. And he actually uh, took some of the colors from the film, these sort of pale um, kind of shell pinks and these lighter blues and these sort of desaturated colors. It, it reminds me almost, they're, they're kind of Eastery colors, you know, they've got this sort of pastel look to them. But he gathered a lot of those colors from illuminated texts of the 15th century. So the early 1400s, um, these religious texts would come out uh, illustrated, illuminated, as we say. And uh, yeah, so he gathered inspiration from that. And then he paired uh, those historical influences with paintings from the early 20th century. So he looked to artists like Matisse and Picasso um, for some of the sort of abstracted shapes and larger planes of color. And then he you know, injected his own stylistic approach, especially with the trees and the, and the, um, the, the thorns in the scene where the prince is battling the dragon. And yeah, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of his own stuff was injected into that, but to create this really unique um, and highly stylized look to the film. And that's why it stands the, the test of time. If you haven't seen Sleeping Beauty, uh, I highly recommend it. It really has its own uh, thing going on. And it's still really inspiring to artists today. Um, actually, this brings me to another interesting thing that I came across is uh, Mike Giamo, Giamo. I think it's Mike Giamo. I'm pretty sure that's how to pronounce his name, but he's the art director for Frozen. And I read a quote. It says, um, I cut my artistic teeth on Ivan Earl and Mary Blair uh, looking to their color relationships for inspiration. And so he went on to say that in Frozen, he used jewel-like tones similar to Earl's deep, rich, analogous color schemes, uh, which I thought was, was pretty interesting. So, and I've heard other artists refer to Ivan Earl as being a, a huge inspiration. Now, I mentioned that during the filming, some of the animators were annoyed, right? Because they had to keep up with those backgrounds. But not all artists were <laughs> were against Ivan. Uh, he did have some supporters and one was Ron Dias, who was a cleanup artist for the characters Aurora and Malef Maleficent. <laughs> it's a hard word to say, the, the bad lady, the villain, Maleficent. Um, so Ron said that he felt Earl was misunderstood 
Um, and that, in fact, he was a huge inspiration to Ron Dias and a few other artists, you know, just, and again, continuing to be an inspiration today. So this part um, that I'm doing right now is the shadowing on the floor. And I just wanted to mention, this was really neat. It was one of the first times I had tried this technique where you just water down the gouache to a more transparent um, consistency to create a shadow. And it worked really well. That floor was kind of a pain in the butt to do, but uh, and here I am creating one of uh, Ivan's trees, his uh, very iconic stylized trees. And I love, I love the way he did trees and it really was an inspiration to me. I've sort of become obsessed with trees over the last few years, uh, drawing and painting trees. And, you know, he really taught me that uh, you can look to nature for reference, but that there's this freedom in stylizing and, and sort of taking what you see and uh, approaching it in a more impressionistic way and then you know adding kind of a graphic um, approach to that so I you know just I feel like I've I've really progressed since studying Ivan Earl's work um, what else can I tell you about uh, about the production I, I think that sort of covers uh, most of what I learned about it I you know I feel like um, this movie was misunderstood. I mean, I don't feel that. I, I know that from what I've read, that it actually lost a lot of money at the box office. Um, being in production for so long, you know, it ended up costing $6 million, which at the time, you know, huge budget, but it only made $5 million at the box office. So it was sort of this bomb, but it did receive high praise from art critics, you know, which makes a lot of sense. It's a really artful film. Um, we're getting to the end here and I'll just I'll just talk a little bit more about my process because I did end up kind of rushing parts of this and that's because again it took me three days so I was getting <laughs> I was getting a little bit uh, tired I guess you could say of, of painting this one piece but I did focus a lot on color but when it came to mixing my gouache um, I wasn't as um, I guess I wasn't as consistent with my consistency <laughs> i was letting the gouache dry a little bit on the on the palette so then it was a bit more grainy and this is the one issue or one of the issues with using acrylic gouache is that um, it is it does tend to dry out and get a little bit grainier so you have to watch watch it with the acrylic gouache that you mix it with a lot of water and keep it at that nice creamy consistency but anyway here it is all finished thanks for watching and i'll make another video as soon as i can